Hello everyone, how's it going? Dr. Incompetent here, and let's play some Caves of Cud and resume our complete beginner's guide here in 2022 with our mutated human in Red Rock. All right, so we're three strata deep, and we've leveled up uh, to level four, and we're getting pretty strong, feeling good. Our armor value is up to five. And if you check us out, we took our freezing ray mutation up to level three. I still have a mutation point left, but I'm going to start sandbagging those at this point, to, like I said, to buy a random mutation. And I used my skill points so that we could uh, get ourselves cleave. But I got to tell you what. You obviously don't have to follow any of the advice that I did for this type of character if you're following along with your own build. This is just what I feel like doing, uh, but feel free to experiment and see what else is out there. All right. Now, I'm going to kind of poke around and auto-explore with the zero key, and we found ourselves a Jilted Lover. So Jilted Lover is just walk over and punch it. And it hits us and we just push that tilde and rest and then explore again. And this is a very common pattern in roguelikes where you have to rest to heal. You just kill it, rest when, make sure there's no enemies around you so that you can rest safely and uh, start sleeping. Now, just like auto explore, if you are curious, the game will immediately wake you up if an enemy comes nearby, it'll be like, hey, this enemy is too close, you wake up. So you're not just killed in your sleep. All right, so this guy is over here. I'm gonna charge him. I'm gonna go to abilities, and I'm gonna push D for charge, and I'm just gonna push enter on that guy, and we flew over to him, and you can see that we killed him with our torch. And we're fighting another scavenger. And we killed him again. Now, um, somehow, our torch has become our primary weapon again. And that's really frustrating. And it says we can't switch limbs in combat. We're not really in combat at the moment. Oh, yes, we are. Okay, um, I'm going to use my freezing ray then and just destroy this guy. So you can see freezing ray just blasted him for six. And uh, that's the beauty of leveling that up, is you have a nice ranged attack. I could have shot him too, but uh, we don't have infinite bullets. All right, so now we ha we reloaded, but if I look at my inventory and I look at my bullets in my um, screen here, you can see how many I've got left and if I should be concerned. Uh, with them. So if I go down here, it's my missile weapon is loaded up with six lead slugs. And I have uh, five more left. So that's why bullets are kind of at a premium now. But freezing ray is just on cooldown. Now, um, can I switch back to having this as my primary? Yes, I can. So if you ever find yourself attacking and hitting people with your torch that is why all right i'm gonna pick these up and i'm gonna get this slender bronze battle axe that's interesting slender must mean it's like cheaper um and i'm gonna pick up these uh moccasins now let's look at this slender bronze battle axe in our inventory right um so it is five accuracy one dice two damage and it just weighs less than normal which is cool but our bronze battle axe um is exactly the same except it's not slender so let's go ahead and go back and let's just use the light one i'm gonna equip it and now we can sell the heavier one, and when we're moving around after we sell stuff, we'll have more space. 
All right, <laughs> scavenger, we just obliterated with our axe, our slender axe. All right, let's go looking around. Let's see what we can find on this floor. Do 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 do. So we don't need to eat. We have enough water, and here's a brute. All right, so the brute is coming at us. I'm actually going to. I don't think I can charge him effectively right here, so I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, freezing ray this guy, and uh, I'm gonna then shoot him like that. Okay. So you see how if I would have shot him like this, I would have hit the wall that's northwest of me. But if I move my fire range up, like I'm aiming at the wall behind this guy, um, I can hit him. Or not. No, I'm still hitting the wall. All right, then. Never mind. <laughs> now, that actually um, did not hit him either. So I'm... I can't tell if I'm just missing or if my shot is hitting the wall. Probably a little bit of both. So anyway, this guy is here. And let's just go ahead and give him a dismember as a gift. And uh, we missed. Okay, so now it's just us and him fighting. And we hope we cleave through his armor. So right away, if I look at him, uh, you can see it does tell you in his description, cleaved minus one armor value. So our cleave has gone off, and now he's going to be mitigating less damage. We hit him for five. He has not hurt us yet. He just hurt us for two. We've been hurting him horribly, and he is badly wounded. And he's dead. And only 25 experience for that guy, which is kind of brutal. You get it? You see what I did there? Brute, brutal. Anyway, um, but we took him down. Now, here is a archer. I'm going to just see if I can freezing ray this guy. Yep. And the snapjaw hunter is dead. Here's another one. I'm going to charge him. And he's dead. So we just quickly mowed through those dudes. And we got a chest. So let's just check it out. There's a weird artifact. There is a vine wafer. And then there's a hand axe. So all good stuff to just pick up and sell. Now in the inventory... Let's go ahead and look at this weird artifact. We're going to examine it with the X key. And it's a thermal grenade mark one. Um, I'm going to equip it. So now if you look at my inventory and my equipment, I have a thermal grenade mark one equipped. If I look at the, this, it'll show you um, that it's a grenade. And once you have a grenade equipped, it doesn't tell you how much damage it does. Maybe I need to know more about it. You push the T key to... Into, uh, initiate throwing something and then you can see that I get to move this around and throw it. But just be careful. Grenades can blow yourself up as well, so handle with care everyone. Alright, let's run around and there is a jilted lover down there. Um, I'm just gonna walk into this thing and let it hit me and then kill it. I like to just do as as well as I can um making sure that what I use are renewable resources. So, like, I don't want to shoot something with a bullet, and I don't even want to use Freezing Ray all the time, because I want to keep those up for more emergency situations. So I just walked over and hit him. Now, I think you can also see that... Uh, okay, there we go. I did hit that guy with my torch, but that just happens. Uh, we hit that guy with the axe. The axe is still the primary weapon, so we're good. Um, oh! big guy. Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and... We're stuck in a spider web. That's okay. I'm just gonna blast this dude. And then... Um, I wonder if I can charge out of being stuck. Let's find out. Nope. It won't even let you try. Okay. Let's just shoot that guy. And we'll shoot him again. Now, like I said, bullets are pretty precious, but against a guy like that, I don't mind just taking him down. That is... Uh, sap stained trash and we don't have the skill to root through trash and find things so no worries now I'm going to keep looking around and here's a regular snap jaw so this guy will just charge and we missed and we should be able to hit this guy pretty easily uh, we hit him with the torch and we missed with the axe 
Remember, you know, you kind of sometimes will hit with your torch. It doesn't necessarily mean it's your primary weapon, but it's always worth checking if you're if you are only hitting with your torch, for example. Okay. Here's this guy. I'm just going to walk down into him and he's gone. He tried to hit me with an arrow. All right, let's see if he has anything. He had a bandage. Um, oops, I didn't want to pick up the corpse. I pushed the get key, the G. And if there's nothing else, you'll just pick up whatever is there. And we don't want to pick up a corpse. All right, so this is a bronze mace. I am going to pick up this bronze mace. And you'll notice again, I'm running out of bullets. It is well within your rights. If you feel like it, you want to be well equipped. You can just go back to Joppa, sell the stuff that you found, and see if the vendor has any more slugs to buy. But unfortunately, that's not always the case. And so, um, a Jilted Lover sensory nodule. Fantastic. Although I would love it if that were the case, uh, sometimes he doesn't, but you can get other stuff instead. You could even switch to a bow if you found one. Like, these guys, these hunters will usually have a bow on them that you can pick up, and then, you know, um... Oh, he's got a tunic. And he's got a dagger, which is great. He has a sword, and he does have a bow as well. And you can get that, and then go buy arrows, you know, and use that just to give yourself a ranged weapon if you'd like. Um, here's this guy up here. And we'll just walk. He's just a regular Snapjaw scavenger, so I'm not going to use anything fancy on him. He did touch us up a little bit, so we just rest. And yeah, this is like, you see all the fences that are around us? This is some kind of Snapjaw fortress that is in here. Remember, your Red Rock will be decidedly different from mine. This is a procedural game, so Red Rock will always be two tiles north of Joppa like you saw it on the world map but how the interior of Red Rock looks is random or procedural based on a set of instructions all right so I'm going to go ahead and ah we'll just walk over here oh wow okay so there's a lot of guys so when you see a lot of guys like this you want to try to get them into a choke point so that they can only hit you one at a time Right now, where I'm standing, this scavenger below me and the one uh, southwest of me can both hit me at the same time. So I don't like that. So I'm just going to kind of go uh, until I can find a better choke point for myself. And that might not be for a while. It might not be until over here, and that's okay. I'm going to go here. And they will follow me. So I'm just going to kind of lure them back into uh, a kill zone. Well, they should follow. Yeah, they are. My torch doesn't illuminate a lot, unfortunately. All right. And once I get them back into this hallway here, uh, I'm just going to wait. And now you can see I found myself in a little choke point where I can only fight one at a time. So I can just stand here and work through these guys and now I can rest and it appears that only I'm going to pick up this hand axe only two of them followed me so this is something that you commonly will do oh this guy's here uh, anybody else on the screen just sometimes even I like I've played this game a bunch I will get uh, you know not see something on the map and so the alt key is just super useful for locating hostile enemies but in roguelike she'll kind of just like you know, try to lure enemies out in a small group instead of just taking on the big group if you want to survive. Uh, I'm going to wait for this guy to come over to me, and here we go. What is this, an anvil? Um, it's made of stone. Well, touche. All right, and let's go in here and see. Yep, here's their camp. There's one next to me, and ooh, okay. So this is the Snapjaw Warlord. So this is a big one. And when you're fighting the Warlord, you got to be ready. So let's go ahead and start off with the Freezing Ray. And then we can dismember. I'm going to use all my fancy tricks on this guy. And, uh... Oh, look at this. We chopped off his left hand. And his two-handed longsword fell to the ground. So he has... He's... We dismembered one of his hands. 
And so he's fighting us with a two-handed sword now with one hand, but it, he can't, so it fell down. So let's see what he's even using. Yeah, he just has furs, and he's now just biting us, basically. He has a pair of crocusins, which we really want. Um, I'm going to hit him, and uh, we cleaved him. So now he has been cleaved. He's uh, injured, and let's just kind of hit him again. You'll see. Uh, we've cleaved him again. And he takes two damage from bleeding. So because we dismembered him, he's taking damage over time from the bleeding. We blocked him. Oh, it's her. We blocked her bite with our shield, but we still took a little bit of damage. Now let me look at her again, and you can see if I go down, scrolly down using the plus key on the numpad, that she has minus two armor value because she's been cleaved twice. Remember, cleave stacks which is why Cleave is awesome. It just procs 75% of the time on a hit. It's a passive ability. It's very good. And so now um, they're dead, and we got 50 experience, and that's it. And we can walk over the Warlord and push G, and we'll pick up their Crocusins. And their furs are pretty good, but they are 10 pounds, so it's a little too heavy. But I am going to pick up this uh, two-handed iron longsword and sell that. Okay, uh, let me rest right here, and just see if there's anything else we want to we wanna loot. It doesn't really look like it. We're hungry, so we're just going to push space next to their campfire. You can't cook with hostile creatures nearby. So there's somebody lurking around. I can't see them just yet, so I'm going to use auto-explore to try to find them. There they are, and we're just going to charge them. Alright, and luckily this is a choke point built in. I'm going to just freezing ray this person oh that was a mistake because there is uh mofu go abalaba so okay here we go everybody i didn't think that there were that many enemies left i thought the warlord was going to be the creme de la creme of this little uh kind of encampment or vault of snap jaws but no there is a unique named snack jaw here. And this, uh, so unique entities will have their name in magenta like this. And it says they're the learned snack jaw bear baiter. And they have some kind of like lore and random traits associated with them. So they're disliked by the Mapongo for lighting a beacon fire to warn their enemies, loved by the snack jaws. Admired by insects for penning a moving poem, and they're equipped with a counterweighted steel battle axe, an, and they have an artifact, which is probably a grenade, so we need to be very, very wary of that. And they have sandals of the river wives, which is like a nice pair of sandals. So we got to be ready for this. This is actually kind of scary. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to uh, run away from this. Oh, I don't want to do that. I just want to sprint. And I'm going to move away and hopefully um, not get killed by arrows and things. And what we're going to do is we're going to kind of go down back to our choke point spot. I don't know if the named entity will follow us, but I'm going to go down here and get done bleeding. Just rest up so that I have all of my abilities off of cooldown. I want to be able to do everything possible to that named Snapjaw. Now, I don't anticipate it to be super hard, but i it's a permadeath game. So you want to be as careful as you possibly can. Because if you die, you will be re-rolling a new character from the very beginning. <laughs> Nothing carries over. That's Caves of Cud, baby. On classic mode, anyway. All right, so I'm going to be moving slowly using the Alt key. And here comes the uh, Hunter. Now, I'm just going to go up to the Hunter. I'm not going to do anything because I want to make sure that it's just me and the hunter. And we killed the hunter eventually. But they did ding us up a little bit. I'm going to push alt. The named creature is not here. I'm going to walk backward and just rest. So it's better to fight the named creature one-on-one -on -one instead of with the hunter. You saw that they had that swarm ability, meaning they get stronger or they make their buddies stronger. I'll show you swarm alpha as long as this creature is adjacent to her target 
she grants two to the swarm bonuses of each other swarmer who is adjacent, right? So like any other snapjaws just have this, uh, some of them have this swarm ability. And if they swarm you, they get, they start to boost each other up and it scales and it's horrible for us. So we don't want that ever. So now it's just mano y mano. All right. So let's see. Um, it's a female. She barks and her hyena tribesmen answer. Well, we hope not. All right. Let's go ahead and just use freezing ray right away. And we froze her. So now while she's down on the ground there, um, I'm going to just... Oh, I need to reload. Okay, fine. Reload. And we're going to shoot her. She's still frozen, right? And we're going to shoot her again. Now, we didn't um, kill her with that, but that's the benefit of freezing Ray. We locked them in place for a little bit, and we were able to get off a couple of ranged attacks to soften her up significantly before she got to us. Now we're going to dismember and pray that we can hit with this. And let's see. Uh, we chopped off her left arm. Oh my god. We did like an Obi-Wan Kenobi move. And she's bleeding and we cleaved her armor. So uh, let's look at her now. So she was... Uh, she still has her battle axe. So... It's counterweighted, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. She's holding it with her right hand because her left arm is gone. And uh, that's where we're at with this. So let's hit her. She's taking damage from bleeding, and she did hit us for three damage with her axe. All right, so we can hit her again, and we hit her this time for five with our axe. They hit us, but they're bleeding, and now they are still injured. Now they're wounded. All right, and we're doing okay. We're only five down. Um, we crit them and badly wounded, bleeding still, and we did it. Now, we killed somebody that was, like, revered within the Snapjaw community for being a hero of their group, and now... Our reputation was 215, which is actually, like, not bad. Like, Snapjaws, you know, thought reasonably well of us. Um, and now it's negative 690 because we killed one of their champions and we are now despised by them forever, which is not a bad deal. Like, they're hostile to us always, but the Mapongo, who we read about, hated her. And so because we did that, we're now favored by them. So we gained faction with the Mapongo, but lost faction with Snapjaws, which, like I said, who cares? And now insects also hate us, which is a shame. I hope the dragonflies now aren't all hostile everywhere because of this. Um, but this is the this is Caves of Cud, baby. These are the effects of doing stuff like this. We didn't really have much choice. This We could have just left them alone. Uh, but this is a great opportunity to get some good gear, get a bunch of experience. I mean, you see, we got 100 experience, and some things are happening in the game for us. I'm going to rest, and let's go look at what she had. So she had Sandals of the River Wives, okay? But she also had this ridiculous axe. So remember, we're axe users. This is a counterweighted steel battle axe, right? So let's get it. Now look at this. Um, if I go to this axe that we just picked up, it's salty and bloody. Let's not worry about that, but let's look at it. It's plus one to hit, normal, and the counterweight gives it a further plus one to hit. But the important thing is it's steel instead of bronze. So the better the, the material that the weapon is made of, the more damage that it's going to do. So this, if we look at our own weapon, our accuracy is going up by two, and our damage is going up from one dice two to one dice three plus one. So this is a huge boost to us. Equip auto. Um, and, I mean, uh, look at the Slender Axe. It was five to hit, one dice two damage, and now we're just sitting here with seven to hit, one dice three plus one. So... Even though insects now despise us because their favorite poet was 
murdered by us, we have a good axe, and that's a good trade. So I'm going to continue exploring, and there's a jilted lover down here. Let's just knock it out, get ourselves 25 experience. If you can, you know, I always just like to clean out the plants if it's not too much of a hassle to get that experience. I'm going to charge in, and there's still more Snapjaws. I mean, this is such a Snapjaw fortress. Amazing. All right, so let's go over here, and there's a dagger, so we're definitely going to pick that up. Uh, there's some robes. We can get those. Anything that's light that you think might be of value, pick it up. And if you don't know what's valuable, like I said, weapons are usually a good bet. But artifacts, technology that's light, try to take that. And as you're playing for the first time, just pick up everything you can carry. Desert Chris is fan, you know, fantastic thing to sell. It's not going to blow you away with how much money, but you can... Like, this build is so strong that we can carry a ton. And that's going to help us dramatically uh, in terms of being able to just bring back boatloads of equipment to sell. All right. So there's nothing left to explore. So I'm going to just push shift right carrot to look for the nearest stairway down. And we found it. All right. And we're going to go down. We're at full health. We are hungry, actually. Uh, so I'm going to um, go here. I'm just going to click on the map. I know there's fires here. So I'm just going to click this spot on the map. And you will path to it. So that's like a nice technique you can use to uh, move around. And we're going to whip up a meal. And you gather some fixings, a sprinkle of anise, I don't like licorice, a gallant flake of shale, rocks, a sprinkle of dog hair, and a salvaged crust of bread. I mean, this is an amazing meal. I would have just eaten the bread, but hey, look at this. We got lucky. We eat the meal. It's tastier than usual, plus one to hit for the rest of the day. That's actually tremendous. So sometimes when you're whipping up a meal, you can, as it says here, get lucky. And we just made a particularly good meal. I think it was the dog hair. We got plus one to hit. Now I'm just going to click over here by the staircase and go back down. I'm leaving some loot on the ground, by the way. You can exhaustively pick things up if you like, but I'm happy with what we've got. Now, sometimes it is worth your while to just see, like, okay, so we picked up some gloves and some crocosins, and we got a, a helmet. So let's see if we need something in any of these slots. So one thing you can do on your equipment screen is just go here to like your face slot and push enter and it will tell you if there's something that you can equip there. So we don't have a cape, we don't have a, something we can put on our face like a mask or some other creature's face, uh, but we can wear um, shoes. So I'm gonna go to my forefeet. Remember, we have uh, forefeet and hind feet because we have multiple legs. Uh, well, multiple sets of legs. So I'm going to put on the crocosins. They actually do give us uh, an armor value, which is tremendous. And then we can put on these sandals of the river wives. Now, if you look at the sandals of the river wives, for example, you'll note that um, they give you plus five to move speed. So why not have something like that? They don't give us armor or uh, dodge, but plus five to move is pretty good. And uh, floating nearby... <laughs> you can get, like, uh, mechanical things, droids, you know, or, like, orbs of light, things that will float around you that are helpful, but we don't have anything for that. And uh, I'm happy with my studded leather armor. Now, if I wanted to, I could remove this and instead equip the Nullworm Skull. And let's just look at this and see if there's any difference. It gives you plus one ego. So that gives you a stat. Whereas um, the cap just gives you a armor value and that's it, but it's lighter. So I'm actually going to um, equip the skull instead because of the bonus. Ego doesn't really matter for us. It's more important for uh, some other types of builds. But if I could have a stat bonus and not or not have one, I'll take it. All right, here we go. We're going down. Now, on this level, we should potentially find some stuff for our quest but let's see okay 
so right away we found a glow white cultist of the Agalut. All right, now let's look at this and um, he's tough, he's hostile, and he's quipped with a carnivorous maw, okay? Um, beneath the umbra of a stinking robe, flesh smears over the bones of a boy who surrenders his body to the metamorphic Newman. All right, so there's all these like religious groups that are um, sometimes just, you know, you you can ignore them, but this group is, is angry and hostile. I'm not going to spoil anything about the lore for you, um, but we need to fight this thing. So uh, it's a child which is beyond disturbing, but they've been manipulated and controlled and are going to kill us with their carnivorous maw if we don't fight them. So here we go. Let's liberate them from this torturous life that they're living, I guess, if we want to try to moralize this in any reasonable way. All right, let's freezing ray them. First of all, we got them stuck in place and I'm going to shoot. Boom. So this is why I like to level up Freezing Ray. It does a good amount of damage, and if you can get people stuck, you can pepper away at range at, with whatever you can find. Even if you didn't get that rifle like I did at Joppa, there's so many bows from the Snapjaw Hunters that you can find arrows with to just get a little bit of extra damage before things move into melee range. And we just hit level five, which is tremendous. We got five hit points, 66 skill points, and a mutation point, bam. And, our, ooh, ooh, okay. This is a reason why you can hold out sometimes with mutation points. So sometimes, as a mutant, you have a random chance to enter an excited state when you level up, okay? And what this means is we get to rapidly advance one of our known abilities. This is why some people don't ever spend mutation points. They try to, like, at least at the beginning, they try to just get new ones because this might happen, and then you level it up for free, effectively. Uh, but you can't necessarily rely on that, and yet this is great. I'm going to do Freezing Ray. Now, the consequence is Freezing Ray, if you rapidly advance something, it is possible to rapidly advance an ability beyond the benefit that you would get from it. So, like, if I boost Freezing Ray, you're going to see it's going to go from rank 3 to rank 6, okay? Now, there could be an argument to, to doing our legs right there because we would get the full benefit. But if you're not high enough level to receive the benefit of the mutation, then it just kind of caps out at whatever you can get and then we'll scale up as you level up and gain the ability to benefit from the higher tiers of your mutations rank, okay? So, um, I mean, we hit that guy for 16 with our awesome rifle. I'm going to show you this. I'm going to go into my um, mutations, and we have two mutation points. I'm not spending them, but Freezing Ray, you can see that it is actually rank 6, and it's being boosted because of rapid advancement, but it's capped at three due to my level. So right now, we're not getting the benefit. But what's cool is when we level up, we should be able to move this to the next rank, and it's just going to do um, more damage for us, and we don't now have to spend any mutation points on it. So you could have gone multiple legs to get more move speed and some carry capacity, but I care more about the damage from Freezing Ray uh, to keep me alive and to hurt the enemies, you know, keep myself alive by killing them faster, that kind of thing. And now we don't have to worry about putting points into this. We can just sandbag our mutation points for the random mutation, and then when we get high enough level, we will start to benefit from the rapid advancement. But again, you can do whatever you want right there. You could go into multiple legs and level that up if you want, okay? Um, so that was what we got. We did not get a choice to level up our teleportation. It was only our physical mutations of our legs um, and the freezing ray, which is, I guess, physical in the sense that it's on our hands. Uh, but anyway, um, that's what, what I chose to do. Now, with our skill points... I don't think I'm going to spend anything yet, but let me show you some things that you could do. I'm going to save up for hook and drag, I think, or at maybe decapitate. 
But here's the deal. You could, if you wanted for some more utility, you could go cooking and gathering and get better meal preparation. But the problem is with this character, I don't have the requisite intelligence to be able to cook effectively. So I would not get this. I would get the ability to like add ingredients. Uh, no, actually I wouldn't. I would unlock this skill category, but I wouldn't be able to do this. So that's problematic. Now I could unlock tactics and get hurdle if I wanted and maybe get throwing, like death throwing if I wanted to throw grenades, okay? I could get wayfaring if I didn't want to get lost when I was traveling, but again, unfortunately, I don't really have the intelligence for that. Now, other choices that you could make would be I want to dual wield, okay? If you want to do two weapon fighting, you can save up for the 300 skill point dual wield and increase your chance to attack with the offhand weapon. Remember I told you that like we were offhanding with our torch occasionally? You can pump that up with dual wheel. I could get endurance to um, help me with harsh situations. I could go bow and rifle if I want to get better with my range stuff. I could get acrobatics, but I don't really have the agility for that. Um, I could also uh, go down here and unlock shields. And if I want to, like, be sword and board or axe and board in this case, I could do that. If I found a really good long blade or a really good mace or something, I could switch to a different weapon set. Um, and I could even go tinkering if I wanted to with this character. But I'll show you if I expand this. Um, it requires intelligence. So what you want to do with this build is look for things that, that can take advantage of strength. Like, for example, in shield... Um, most of this we do well, but we do need some agility for it. Now with shield, if we took it, we would go to a 50% chance to block, okay? Um, which is great. And then we could get shield slam, which means like we get a new ability to just bash someone with our shield. And it's a nice, um, you know thing because you can knock them down uh, and just you know get a stronger attack deft blocking means we block even better but we'd need agility so you could like plan ahead be like oh you know what I need agility with this character so I'm going to start spending my skill po my stat points rather on agility so I can get this staggering block um, means just every time we block there's a chance that our opponent is stunned for one to two rounds I mean that's amazing right so it's strength times two minus 35%. Currently, um, our strength is 23. So, you know, strength times two is 56 minus 35. So, I mean, that means every time we block, which is right now like 25% of the time, we have like maybe around an 11% or so chance to stun them for one to two rounds, which is really good. So that's something we could think about. Right now, I feel like I kind of want to save up and try to get something like Decapitate which just adds heads to the list of possible limbs you can dismember. Um, and if you chop off the only head of an organic component, they're killed instantly. If they have multiple heads, they start bleeding, bleeding profusely, okay? So this is just an insta-kill, which is cool. And then we can work up to Berserk if we want. So that's something if you want to go heavy combat, or you could go utility, or you could go more defensive. I mean, um, Endurance, for example, you open this up, and you get the ability for Shake It Off, which means if you're dazed or stunned, you can just get out of that. And you take less from Poison, which is great. You can learn to swim, which is super helpful. Um, and then you could try to get better at dealing with Poison and some of these other things. But that requires toughness, which uh, we aren't super tough. But look, remember how some of the shield abilities required 19 agility? We, With this preset, we're at 18 agility. So getting there is actually not hard. So that's something to consider. So I'm going to save my points at the moment. But if I find a better shield, I might be really tempted to do something else. And then look, bam. That cultist is going to trigger this. You have finished the step, find the critters of the quest, what's eating the water vine. You gain 100 experience. Actually, no, wait. Let me retract that. It's not the cultist, it's this. 
it's finding this, this Gershling, okay? So this Gershling is what we needed to find for the quest, all right? And all we need to do then is go abilities and try to kill this thing. Now you notice that my freezing ray is on cooldown, and that's, that's kind of a shame. But this is only average, so I'm just going to charge this guy. And we charged it. We cleaved through it with the armor. We hit it with our counterweighted steel battle axe for 8 damage. And it's um, doing okay. It's actually fine, which gives you a sense of how difficult this enemy is. I'm going to try to dismember it. Um, and we chopped off its left mid hind leg and it's bleeding right it does not penetrate our armor our armor value of five okay and what we're gonna do is then just hit it it did not penetrate our armor but we hit it it's now wounded okay um we hit it and we killed it we got 90 experience and we step over this. Now, you'll see that the corpse is in magenta because we actually need this. Um, I have to pick this up, it's quite heavy, but we pick it up because we have to take this back to the village elder for the quest. And it says, you have finished the step, get a critter corpse of the quest, what's eating the water vine, you gain 100 experience. Press space, we did it. So now we've got experience, and if I go to my journal, um, oops, and I go, I'm sorry, my quest tab, you'll see that we finished Travel to Red Rock, we finished Find the Critters, and we finished Get a Critter Corpse of the quest What's Eating the Water Vine. Now it says, Return with a Critter Corpse um, to Red Rock. And we have an artifact that we can give to our guy for the next part of his quest. We could either give him the broken artifact that we have or the grenade that we have equipped, depending on what we find. So right now, what we could do is just go back to town and sell stuff, turn things in for quests, and find out what to do next. However, we also can explore the rest of Red Rock uh, Level 4 and see if there's anything here that's valuable that we want to haul back. Because, um, being honest with you, once you finish Red Rock and the quest by going back, uh, there's not a huge need to come back here, so you probably won't come back here. So you might want to finish clearing it out before you go back, just to see if there's anything good. And that's kind of what we're going to do, but I think we'll get into that in the next episode. Everyone, um, this is a good place to stop. I want to say thank you so much for watching. I really hope you're enjoying this series and learning um, you know, just how to do this first major quest that you get and the business of combat, of exploration, of uh, leveling up, of managing your inventory, all of the skills that start to emerge at this point in the game. And we will pick up with this next time. I'm, I think I might do one more episode here of this series just to really get you into it, and then you can take it from there, unless people really want to see me play this character more uh, for this guide, I'm not sure. So let me know what you would like in the comments below. I'd love to chat with you guys about the game. Let me know if you have any questions. I'll check you next time. Take care.